this meeting to order. This is the November 21st, 2017 meeting of the Northampton Transmission Marketing Commission. Um, these proceedings are being audio and video recorded. My name is Ryan O'Donnell, the chair of the commission, and perhaps we'll go around and introduce ourselves for the benefit of the public and start with our DPW direction. Donald Scalia, Department of Public Works Director. We tied in place, State Building. Jim Fisher, Citizen. Gary Harwell, Citizen. Richard Cooper, Citizen. Alan Burson, Planning Board. Jody Casper, Chief of Police. Okay, thank you. Well, we'll begin with public comment. Uh, it's an opportunity for members of the public to speak on any issue you wish. Um, well, <coughs> just to state your name and address for record. Uh, my name is Fred Zimlock. I live on Conroy Terrace next to uh, Shaw's Motel. I just have uh, one point of fact. I'm not sure how many people understand what it means, but anyway, I'll give a point of fact and I have a question. I left my house on Sunday about 5 p.m. and headed up Bridge Street. I needed to stop at the traffic light which lets cars get onto the Route 91 south ramp. I noticed two sleepers taking a left off of exit 19 of Route 91 and heading down Bridge Street. I thought they would be using the Lincoln Street to get to Coke plant. I proceeded up to the next light and waited. I then took a left on Damon Road. I needed to wait at the light to allow bikers to cross the road. I proceeded down Damon Road. While waiting at the next light, I wondered where those sleepers were going. So I took a left on Industrial Drive, followed the two sleepers around the Industrial Drive rotary. When trucks come up North Street, they can't take a right into the Coke plant. They need to go and proceed around the rotary and then back to Coke. I then proceeded up Industrial Drive to Damon Road and to CVS, my original destination. Using Bridge Street and Lincoln Avenue as a truck route is sometimes be called a shortcut to reach Coke. In this instance, it doesn't look like these two sleepers took a shortcut. My question is, is there any progress on the DOTS new truck traffic sign at Route 91, exit 19, that is to be designed consistent with federal regulations? Well, as you know, we can't really discuss items that aren't posted on the agenda. Oh, so, well. but, but, Fred, I can find out and send you an email and we can discuss okay. it. But thank you for bringing your concern to the yeah. commission. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there any other public comment before we begin? Okay. Um, then we'll launch into our agenda. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting? So moved. Motion to approve, seconded by Mr. Hartwell. Any discussion on the minutes? Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. So they've approved unanimously. Um, reports from the DPW. All right, um, a few construction updates. So Day Avenue, um, we're winding down a, a, a few fairly large projects here. Um, Caracas Construction on Day Avenue uh, is wrapping up work for this season. Uh, we should be out of there this week. Um, final paving will occur in the spring. Um, Audubon Road, same situation. Contractor will be uh, wrapping up work this week. And final coat of pavement will go down in the spring. Um, Hinkley Street, we're going to try to continue working on that as long as the weather permits. Um, so we're currently doing um, quite a bit of work on the uh, water system. Um, as long as we continue to have good weather, we'll continue with that work. Um, Holyoke Street, the contractor is continuing to install a drainage culvert. Um, Polio Street is closed. Uh, this is for the old lumberyard site. Um, work is anticipated to be complete. Um, we're hoping for like mid-December. Um, a couple of other things. Um, we continue to anticipate the release of the sidewalk inventory. Alta Planning and Design um, is uh, continuing their work on uh, prioritizing segments of sidewalk. Um, this will be based largely on proximity to public schools and Northampton and Florence Central Business Districts. Um, they're hoping to see this report by the end of the year. 
And um, finally, um, based on a recommendation from this body um, quite some time ago, uh, speed hump was installed last week on William Street between Montview and Hockenham Road. Um, this was funded using traffic mitigation money from neighborhood developments. Um, there is a small amount of remaining money um, that will be used for line striping at the intersection of Montview Ave, Henry Street, and Ventures, Philip Road, and we're planning on striping in the spring. Thank you very much. Any questions for the director? I appreciate um, that speed bump on William Street, which has been a long time coming. I know the neighbors appreciate it too, so thank you very much for that. Um, if there's no other questions, planning is planning good. Yeah, meeting is going <coughs> forward on our uh, Valley Bike Share program. So you all, we talked about at last meeting, we have 50 stations throughout the Valley, uh, for 14 here in Northampton. We've done our initial layout for all the stations, all our um, South Dio things, in terms of electrical hookups, they may change a little bit. We're channeling them where they are. Uh, so, moving ahead. Questions on this? Any other departments? Okay. Um, well, let's see. We have not that many things on the agenda. Um, Director Biden, is, is what you said, did that take care of the update and discussion on Valley Bike Share, or do you want yeah. to elaborate on that? No, that's, that's what I found. Okay. Um, in terms of item E, which is consideration of a metered parking space on Center Street, Councilor Shera brought that up. Um, unless she shared some background with the DPW or someone else. Um, then I, I have some background on it. Do you want to take that item? Sure. Okay, please. Yeah, so the across the street from the police station, uh, there's a building that just went through a big remodel there. I believe it's law offices. There used to be a curb cut there, and it went up onto kind of an odd little driveway parking thing, whatever that was. Uh, but now, with the new building there and the remodel, where cars used to pull up and sometimes park or, or drive through, it's grass and it's not anywhere that a car would ever drive now. It's there's benches and it's a nice little parkish type area. So now there's a curb cut, but there's nowhere to go that would drive onto a, a, a lawn. Uh, so there's, it, it appears to me that there's ample space there to just add a parking spot. I know parking is at a, at a, at a minimum and it'd uh, be nice to add another one. So it appears that it, it could go there without any issue other than uh, striping it and sticking a meter there. Great, and it's my understanding the ordinance wouldn't even have to be changed because it's just a continuous, um, the, whole, the whole length of Center Street is whatever rule it is for Center Street. So. What about the curb cut? I mean, the curb cut's there. I, I don't know what would have to happen from DPW. It seems like it could just remain. There are other areas in the city, I believe, where there's curb cuts and a parking spot in front of them where old things have been. I can think of a couple on Pleasant, I think. So I don't know that that needs to be addressed, but you might know better than I if that would need to be modified. Where we have to take a look at I'm not, not familiar with. There's one on Elm Street also. Um, <laughs> Chase House and Gillette House. Used to be a driver there. Right, right. I think there's a few around the city. I don't see it as in any way prohibiting the ability to put a space there that I could tell. Okay. Well, do we need any action from, from this commission today? Is there any interest in a recommendation to do it if possible, or should we just wait for the DPW to take a look at it? Might be the best first step. Send me a email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to add to your. Giant yeah, pile okay. of emails. That'd be great. Thank okay. you. All right, well, thank you. I'm sorry. God, you're really holding me accountable. <laughs> <laughs> you can see now. Talk to me later. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'll follow up and also update Council Chair. All right. Thank you very much. Um, if there's nothing else in this one, um, item B is the question of the appointment of, of um, nine people to the Bicycle and Pedestrian Subcommittee. Those are Devin Bruce, Mandy Chan, and Michael D. Pasquale, that correct? Uh, Director Fiden, John Gustav, James Lowenthal, David Payne, Joe Ella Tarbritton, and Ruthie Woodring. Um, Director Fiden, I don't know if you want to elaborate on it. Sure. So these are all the current members. You know, officially they serve, I think it's a one year term or until replaced. So they're all serving uh, except their terms have expired, with the exception of James Lowenthal. He was on the committee and left for a sabbatical, and now he's back. I'd like to get back on. So it would be in order to have a motion to appoint these people. So moved. Okay. Is it George Fine makes a motion? Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Alvin Fisher. Any discussion on the appointment? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? So that passes unanimously. Um, so 
Item C is parking at Bridge Street School and related issues. I kind of expect the Councilor Nash to be here, um, but it could be he's going to be here, or it could be we finish before he gets here, in which case he's out of luck because we're so efficient. Um, but why don't we go to a, a substantive item, which is A, this is 17.420, and it's just an order to lower the default speed limit to 25 miles an hour in certain districts. <coughs> Um, I can read for the record if there's any interest in me doing that, but it may not be necessary. We may just discuss it in concept. It's totally up to the, up to the commission. Um, unless I hear an appeal to do that, I'll just launch into, uh, into the discussion. It's something we've raised before um, in this commission. Basically, there is a relatively new state law in the past two years that allows cities and towns to lower the default speed limit in residential and business districts from 30 to 25 miles an hour. Um, as you probably know, even if a street does not have a speed limit posted on it, uh, there is still a speed limit. Um, it's the default speed limit in what would be considered to be the reasonable and proper speed for a district like that. Um, in this case, we're talking about in the case of residential neighborhoods, houses that are spaced on average 200 feet or less um, apart. So there's, it's a density issue. And in places like that, if there's no posted speed limit, the de facto speed limit is 30 miles an hour, and this would lower it to 25. Um, I think almost 30 communities around the Commonwealth have done this, and it's something that I think is important for the Hampton to consider. I think we know there's quite a difference um, if there's ever an accident um, between 25 miles an hour and 30 miles an hour in terms of how the pedestrians fare after that, um, that unfortunate occurrence. So it may not sound like a big difference, but it could be. So this is what the order would do. It's also referred to the Council Committee on Legislative Matters for <coughs> legal scrutiny in terms of its form. But I feel like this, this commission's role is to discuss the policy of whether should lower the statutory speed limit in certain districts from 30 to 25. Um, so that's what I would like everyone's feedback on um, today. That's my introduction. I see a map was passed out while I was, I was blabbing on. Does, does DPW want to give an introduction of the map? Uh, oh, so, we so um, this is just, you're seeing the, the upper right the <coughs> definition of what the prima facie speed limit could cover. So it's areas, if we both these criteria, areas where um, homes are within 200 feet of other homes for a distance of at least a quarter of a mile. So if you have uh, two homes right next to each other and they're in a rural area that doesn't kick it in, it has to be sort of, it has to be densely settled, fair number of homes. That said, it is a pretty low threshold. So most of the residential areas in Northampton cover this. On the map, you see the roads are, I'm well, not very color, some sort of blue. Um, and then the shading are the homes that are within 200 feet of other homes for a distance of at least a quarter of a mile. So those are the areas which in theory could be covered by, by this ordinance. Again, some areas have other speed limits, and, and so I don't know if the intent is to cover all the roads or just to cover some of those ones. Well, I guess the other restriction would be that this would not apply to state highways, as I understand it. So I think we're getting taking out South Street and Bridge Street and places like that. Um, in my understanding, it would only apply to streets with no speed regulation. So any street that, you know, if you want a speed regulation on a street, we've talked about this plenty of times in the commission, we have to pay for our own study, submit it to Mass DOT, and they have to approve it. And that's how you get a sign. It was actually shocking to me that, that Mass DOT individually gets involved with each speed regulation on each street, but apparently they do at some level. So this would only be for the streets that don't have any speed limit on So some of these streets, as I look at it, as, as Wayne said, it's like most of the city, but I know some of these streets have their own speed sign on them. So it wouldn't apply to those. And just to be clear with the state highway piece, I think that's state highways as in the state owns them as opposed to number of roads. So okay. it's a, it's a South Street, for example, much of it is owned by the city, some of it becomes owned by the state once you get down to the road. Ahead. Presumably South Street, for example, has posted speed limit. But that's a good point. We know we're disappointed to Cardinal Way. People we heard from last week. I think that's
that is a posted speed limit as well. That is posted. No, that's a, that's yeah. actually unposted. Oh, really? Um, it would apply to a portion of Cardinal. is what a portion of Cardinal Way uh, using this criteria would be considered fake as hell. The only reason there's gaps in this map is oddly enough it's solely defined by residential uses. So you get a really dense commercial use. If there's no residences there, it's not going to show up in this map. Any thoughts on it from anyone? Um, <coughs> Would have, do I recall seeing something um, <clears throat> that there would be no signs put up? My understanding is that right now you don't need a sign for the 30 mile an hour <coughs> statutory speed limit. So I wouldn't think that would change if we lower it to 25. I think the signage that would be required, as others have pointed out, what would be a good idea would be educational signage, for example, at the jurisdictional boundaries of the city. I, I mean, there's, it seems that it's an issue of informing drivers that they could be ticketed for doing what they've lawfully done for many, many years. Absolutely. So I can speak to this signage. I can speak to the signage and, and sort of what this legislation would mean for DW in terms of implementation. So the requirement would be that we would need to install signs at the city limits. And the signs are larger than typical speed limit signs. They're like two and a half feet by five feet. Um, and the language on them is thickly settled, speed limit 25 citywide unless otherwise posted. So that's what the sign would say and that would need to be installed at all entry points to the city of which there are 23. So Two and a half by five foot signs, they would likely need concrete bases. Um, more than could reasonably be done with our uh, in house labor. Um, so we would have to look at uh, contracting this out. Um, so that's kind of the city limit piece. And then on each street that's on this map, there is a possibility to put up, it, it's a non-standard speed limit sign, so it's a, it's a yellow speed limit sign, and the speed limit sign says thickly settled district, if it were determined to be a thickly settled district, 25 miles an hour, and the sign is yellow, so it looks different than a regular speed limit sign. And we would have to consider what the application of those signs would be and what sort of process we would want to go through to allow people to request a sign for their neighborhood understanding that there is a uh, equipment and labor cost associated with each one of these signs uh, as well as the maintenance costs associated with the signs but in terms of posting um, that would be the way we would communicate to drivers this is how fast you can go in this area. Got it. Or I assume you might do a combination of them if you thought it was was wise. Of local roads as well as the, the boundaries. <coughs> yeah, and the, where this gets tricky is, you know, like um, Florence Road. You know, you pass the city limits and there's a posted speed limit there. And so posted speed limit's 40 miles an hour and then you install a, you know, thickly settled 25 miles an hour sign mm -hmm. in proximity to the 40 mile an hour posted speed limit for this roadway, and this is going to need to be analyzed to avoid the obvious confusion that could ensue. And this is what gets a little tricky. You know, you have a community like Cambridge, you know, right? All of Cambridge is thickly settled. It's sort of a no-brainer, you know, you've put the signs up at the city when that's in you move on, but Northampton's a, not that. Thank you. Any other? When would the ordinance go into effect? Well, I guess what I really mean is um, would it go into effect before all 23 signs are installed? I would say that's a, one of the policy considerations for us. I just stuck in July 1st, 2018, because it, I think at least six months is reasonable probably for the same reasons you're thinking of. But if more time is required, you know, I, 
I think that's one of the decisions about, about doing this. I think we need to look at uh, funding for this. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, there's a cost associated with the signs as well as the uh, installation of them. And I wonder in theory, I mean, we have traffic calming funds. Obviously, I have no role in directing how any money is spent, but I assume that would be a legitimate use of some of the traffic calming funds, which we kind of have a surplus um, insofar as we have a surplus of any money. I, I, I was particularly wondering about the Chief's perspective um, concerning enforcement. Um, have you given any thought to those, those issues? Yeah, I think when it comes to enforcement, I think for drivers and for police officers, streets that have signs on them are the ones that everyone's most comfortable enforcing on. Um, and when it goes over to court, you have a street with no sign on it, I think there's, uh, I'll say, more support for streets that are posted. Uh, so there's an investment <laughs> in, our, in our signage here that I think would be an important part of the process. Uh, it's a problem you, you have now, for example. Absolutely, yes, yes. Yeah. It's not it's not a new problem. It's yeah. just it's the same problem we have now, where these streets are not, um, yeah, drivers, some drivers don't know what it is, even if it's in the, the law. <laughs> some sure. drivers haven't taken the time to, to read that and make a connection between the neighborhood they're driving in. It's a thickly settled area, and it's it's a third. You know, that's, that thinking is not always there. Okay. Any other comments? Now, did you have a ballpark figure what it costs to install a sign? I mean, is it, I mean, I know it depends on the location, but $400 I do not. per sign? Do I do not. Um, I don't have a, I don't have a number for how much the sign itself costs or what the installation would cost. Um, we uh, we have to go out in a public process and, uh, you know, get bids. But in general, when, when the DPW installs a sign, does it, does it take? We have an employee who works for us, who, who deals with our sign installation, but those are one-offs, you know? Like right, I was just wondering if you had a sense that, you know, you know, somebody, well, your employee can install a sign in you know, half a day or whatever. So I'm just trying to get a sense of, you know, what kind of number we're talking about for 23 entrance signs, you know, is it $23,000? Yeah, I, I do not have a financial answer okay. for you. Um, I'll also mention that there's permitting involved too with um, with these signs, particularly if they're in state layout. So that's something that needs to go through Mass DOT. Um, <coughs> Councilor Nash, Jim Nash is here from Ward Three. Councilor, Hello. Are you Sorry, I'm late. No, you're okay. You, I'm happy you didn't speed on your way over here. Um, I walked. Oh, good. I walked. Wow. You didn't get hit by any cars going over it's 25 miles an hour. Would you like to speak to this since you're uh, also a, a sponsor of it? I, I, I don't want to waste people's time too much, but I, um, I, I look at this as, as Councillor O'Donnell does, as a conversation starter, you know, that I, I really think it is the will of people in Northampton to see the traffic speeds come down, and this could be one of a whole bunch of tools that, you know, we, have a, we already have our traffic calming initiatives, like a, the Pleasant Futures project going on. Um, and uh, but this could be another way to bring down the speed limits. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Any other comments from the commission? Would it be appropriate to instead of say July 1st, 2018, to add but no sooner than all 23 signs are installed? That sounds conceptually okay with me. I think, you know, I would like to see this go forward as, as Councilor Nash said. I also don't want to create a logistical burden or nightmare for the DPW or any other city department because there's a logistical question here. So I wouldn't want to rush doing this. Um, you know, I think, I, I hope we all support it in concept, you know, but do you think it might be wise to wait another month to kind of hash out the logistical concerns from particularly the DPW's perspective and come back to it in December? Um, or would it be better to just kind of take a stand on it in concept now? I wouldn't want to commit anyone to anything that would be problematic. That's my only concern. Okay, I think that, you know, 23 signs are 23 signs and we can deal with the installation and procurement of those. But 
as the chief said, when we're talking about actually making this effective, that's going to be reliant upon signs on individual roadways. And I think that we do need to have a policy decision related to are we going to be purchasing a thousand signs and hanging them up on every single street in Northampton? And if so, okay, you know, let's talk about what that's going to look like. Or if not, let's also talk about what that's going to look like because what street are these signs going on or not? I think, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you my my thought about this, as I read the state law and saw what other communities do, um, I didn't contemplate that we would actually put signage on each of the individual streets where it would, would change, simply because we don't have signage on them now telling them that it's 30. You know, I, I take this to mean, what's the default speed limit when there's no signage? And so I thought that would be the advantage of doing it on kind of a citywide basis. Um, is you, you could avoid putting new, like thousand new signs up. Um, that being said, you do have to educate people somehow, and that's kind of the value of the, the boundary signs. But I mean, if you think it's, is it your opinion that you, even though we wouldn't have to, we, we still should? I can't speak to it from an enforcement yeah. standpoint. You know, I'm, I'm <coughs> so the, the logistics of the infrastructure is, yeah. is my angle, is yeah. so I'm looking at the logistics of ins, you know, procuring, installing, and maintaining the infrastructure that's necessary to affect yeah. whatever change is going to happen here. Um, I just, you know, would sort of question the effectiveness of this if people can't see a visual representation of, of what we've enacted. No, fair point. I think also, realistically, no matter how many streets fall in here, we're certainly not talking about needing signs on every single street. Some of these streets are so tiny and they, they don't require this kind of signage. So it would be a process of recognizing, well, which streets that are within this list are ones that we frequently get complaints about and that have problems with speeding cars, because certainly the large portion of them really don't. They're small little streets that have almost no traffic on them. Um, so we would have to figure out how many of these streets do we think should have signs on them. How many signs is that, and then how much it would cost, and how are we going to support that? Is it going to be a multi-year plan of like we'll do ten signs a year, or I don't know what we can afford, or what's in the budget for it? But what's our kind of long-term plan? Whether we keep it where it is now, or whether it drops to 25, to me that the signage is even a more important point. I think if we want to slow cars down, we need signs with the speed limit, whether it's 25 or 30. I think there's some streets that are thickly settled on this map that have a posted speed limit of 30 or 35. Definitely. So, so you would, wouldn't be doing it there? Well, why not? Because the law is only about the streets where there's no posted speed limit. So if it's already a posted speed limit, it stays. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, but you can't just look at every sign, right? Because it's in an ordinance. Now, this this legislation does not supersede the posted I think you know in general, we often get requests to petition MassDOT to lower our speed limit, and we often say that's not going to be effective because people drive how a street feels more than they do by looking at a sign. You know, it's looking at a sign and comparing it to their odometer to make sure they're obeying the law. They they drive how it feels. But I would say that with something that's done on a citywide basis, it seems like it's an overall kind of, I don't know if you want to call it cultural change, you would hope. Um, that you know, when you enter into Northampton, you see these signs that say, in every residential neighborhood area, please you know, be aware it's 25 miles an hour. It's just kind of a, um, like I say, sort of a, a different kind of way of thinking about driving in the city, and that's what we're aiming for. The law is two years old, and I don't know how effective it's been in Boston and places that have done it like that. I do think it probably is not going to increase problems. I think it would probably be a benefit. How much, you know, I don't know, to be honest. I know we are on record as a commission like 10 years ago supporting this policy. Um, there's been state legislation to do this specific thing for a long time, 
and it was just rolled into an omnibus modernization act that was enacted finally in the law. So I think in principle, there's an argument to be made for it, but there are logistical concerns. I mean, if I had my, if I had my way, I would say we should make a commitment to do it and find a way to put up the jurisdictional signs. And then when it comes to the street by street assessment of whether we add additional signs in addition to that, I would almost rather just defer to the DPW and chief of police about where they think that's necessary. Um, I sort of don't think it's this commission's responsibility to, to put signs in certain places anyway. Um, it's kind of almost too granular or more of a what's the overall policy kind of committee. That'd be one thought that I had. I concur. I mean, I like the idea of that North Hampton is a safe community and we, you know, we value our neighborhoods um, and that we want to have a general policy of slowing the speed down. Um, and I understand the need for informing the public about it, although um, right now, as we said, you know, there's no posted speed limit. The public is supposed to know what it is. I'm surprised to hear that the courts don't uphold that. Um, and that said, I, I, I don't like the idea of all the clutter of, you know, sign upon sign upon signs and, and right. people just end up ignoring them all anyway. Right. Um, yeah, so it's not an easy thing, but I think um, <coughs> in policy, I think it's a good direction to move. Okay. Um, would it be acceptable to have a motion to approve this knowing that we'll come back and discuss some of the logistics to the degree we should, but not to the degree that it's the police department and the DPW's responsibility. We don't want to interfere with that. Um, or is it something that, I'm particularly asking two, two people in particular whether they would be nervous about approving this today, whether you'd rather wait until December. I certainly would like to approve the policy, but I don't want to do anything too hasty. You too, I, for me, you too, if you don't know. I, I think, you know, in theory, I agree. I agree with the sentiment. The practical application of this poses um, financial and logistical considerations for the city that need to be um, considered. So that's from the DPW's standpoint. I always love the idea of slowing down cars, but I'm also cognizant of the fact that there's a cost for the city. So it's just a matter of, I think it's hard to make the decision without knowing what that cost is. You know, what are we talking about? And uh, yeah, that's why I'd be cautious based on money. Okay. Um, I would really like us to move forward with this policy. It's something we've wanted and talked about for a long time. In some ways, we talk about it in every meeting, indirectly in a sense. So I'd really like to do it. And so I wonder if it would be acceptable to kind of have an understanding that if, can we come back in a month with sort of more details in, in, our, in our minds about whether or not we should do this so we can make an informed decision in the month of December at our meeting? Yeah, what I will try to do is get a uh, handle on what the financial and logistical considerations are. There. That would be great. And report back. Okay, well thank you. Is there any other comment in that case? Councilor Nash. Well, I would just want to add that should this commission move forward on this and make some um, headway on it, half the emails I get have to do with cars and pedestrians in that relationship. And that, you know, oh, the cars are too fast, oh, my kids are, you know, I don't trust them walking to Bridge Street School, you know, that. It, it all adds up to much the same thing. So that this would be a um, this would be a winner. So that's my <coughs> thoughts. Okay, thank you very much. Um, unless there's any other discussion on this, then uh, if there's any not any objection, why don't we continue it to our December meeting? Okay. All right. So without objection, we uh, will do that. Um, Item C is parking at and around Bridge Street School and related issues. I understand it's a follow-up to the last meeting, which I wasn't at, but I put it on the agenda for good measure. Um, and I'll ask if there's any need to talk about this item. Council, do you want to? Okay. 
come up to the podium. Hello, everybody. Um, so last month, uh, I raised the question of, uh, you know, I asked for ideas around Bridge Street, schools, parking, congestion, and, um, and some good ideas were generated here. Um, I, uh, on election day, I met with uh, the, the principal and the superintendent, and uh, we tossed around the ideas. Uh, ideas suggested were moving the bus pickup drop off over to uh, Bridge Street, um, and um, both the superintendent and the principal were not in favor of that. They felt like it was a safety issue. Um, I wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure they were on board with any ideas before we start filtering it down into getting more support for things. Um, they, um, but they they did uh, they are going to explore having uh, the special education vans come through the parking lot and pick up in the back of the building so that they're going to be pulled out of that little uh, loop by. Um, on Parsons Street there between Lamprin and the and the cemetery um, they did like the idea of uh, creating that a small portion of Parsons making it one way uh, maybe um, either temporarily or um, or all day long uh, whatever would make the most sense but the idea that um, that uh, it would eliminate uh, a lot of the um, it, with two-way traffic, it, there's a point where it's very narrow, um, and that um, and you add in buses and cars on either side of the street, and that's a source of uh, congestion. And I believe that's where all the ticketing went on, that um, was uh, got a lot of um, talk about a month and a half ago. Um, they were also. Uh, you know, the, the one-way street idea gave me an idea, which I talked about with Councillor O'Donnell, um, which was the idea of maybe uh, we increase one way on uh, Parsons. Uh, right now, Parsons, as it goes along the cemetery, is actually quite narrow. It, it doesn't allow for two-way traffic if there's parking, but if that portion were actually one way, we could create a number of uh, uh, temporary parking, you know, 15 minute parking spaces. Um, they agreed that there is a need to create short term parking and that um, not just for this pickup drop off that goes on at the end of the uh, beginning and end of the day, but also um, uh, throughout the day. Parents dropping off lunches, dropping off kids after dentist appointments, picking them up because they're sick to bring them home. So having available parking like that would be really good. Um, so, based on that, um, I'd like to throw it out to you guys to see if you think that's good. Um, and, um, and if so, what I'd be willing to do is, you know, to meet with uh, the DPW and, you know, and maybe, you know, see if any of this is logistically possible. And maybe uh, with the police department as well. Um, that. Um, before we go out and get the community behind us, we, we need to make sure that these things are possible first. So that's my little thank report. You, thank you very much. Right, yeah, any comments from our city departments on some of those comments? Yeah, I think changing, changing traffic direction on a roadway is not as easy as changing traffic direction on a roadway. There, there is uh, engineering that is uh, associated with that. So, right. um, depending on the extent of the alterations we're talking about, we'll, um, that'll sort of dictate how much of a process this is going to make. Well, I that's fair. That's. I'm worth. I think it's worth looking into that if you guys are interested. But yeah, if it's too daunting, we don't do it. So, is an appropriate way to go forward with some of the specific ideas to bring actual concrete ordinances forward to this committee to kind of individually look at each one 
or is it better to keep having a holistic discussion? Is it disadvantages to both? I mean, a holistic discussion can just kind of go nowhere, whereas an ordinance can be, we can actually take action one way or the other, but then if we do that, we may be focusing on not the whole picture, so. I think to make any sort of, of feasibility assessment, we need specifics, like, you know, from this point to this point, we want to do this, or right. that Well, you know, that point. what I'd really like to do is, is with maybe with you and with, with uh, Maggie, to just kind of walk around and like look at, you know, the different sites and, um, and get your input on things and. Classic city council site visit. That's right. Which everyone loves doing those. I'll buy coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that would be very good. Okay. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, you know, maybe if some of the school officials want to attend and kind of point things out from their own experience. Um, I know Council Shara has experience as a parent at Bridge Street School. She's not at this meeting, but um, I'm sure she has some specific ideas that she can offer as well. Well, I'm keeping her in the loop all the time, so. Right. Um, I, I think what I would say is DPW gets a lot of requests for a lot of different things from a do. lot of different places, and what <laughs> makes it what makes it very easy for us is the more specific the request, the easier it is for us to make a determination. Of well, I can be really good at a specific request if you give me some information as to very this good. would probably be a better specific request to make. Right. Fair enough. <laughs> Have we moved on from the idea of 15 minute spaces at the end of Union Street? Well, that's the other thing, you know, I, I think there might be, um, that would be another thing to look at. Okay. One of the things we did, I, I, I have moved away from, is the idea of creating like eight in a row there. Because we're looking for a, a lot of temporary parking for all of these parents showing up to, we have parents coming in from East Hampton through school choice and, and they have to use their cars. So, um, but I've moved on from the idea of of getting people on Union Street angry at me for something that's not, not going to solve the whole problem. If it did, I think it would be worth it having a few people angry. But um, I, I, I don't think it's going to do it. Um, but if we could look at the Parsons Street thing and, I mean, it, for, on Parsons Street, if we made temporary spaces there, <coughs> if you go there right down, nobody, well, nobody's parked there because it's no parking. So, um, and nobody's going to do long-term parking there. Um, so that basically, those spaces will be free most of the day, except for somebody visiting their house or, um, or picking and dropping off at the school, which would be a, a quick visit, so. People park there now? No. Not at all? Yeah. Not at all. Okay. So it wouldn't be a case of people losing parking. Right. Right. They'd be getting parking. Right. <laughs> That's the deal. <laughs> um, and I guess it's a good point that parking rules can be changed temporarily as an experiment. I know that is sometimes done. Um, if you were to you know, want to gauge the effectiveness of maybe not eight, but fewer. 50 minute spaces or whatever. You probably wouldn't want to have a temporary one way street, but uh, or some of the other things. It might make sense to experiment with it. Um, but. All right, so what, I mean, Councillor, I'll, I'll come I, with you. On your I will send an email to Great. DPW and Donna, and we'll go out for coffee. Great. Walking around. I know, I know it's a <laughs> complex problem that, that you've taken on. So thank you. Hey, if I don't solve it, it'll keep coming back. Right. Me, so. <laughs> and you guys. Fair enough. Right. Thank, thank you very you. much. Um, well, I think that takes care of all of our items. We have one member of the public who walked in after four, uh, who I know, Mr. Cusisto. You know, I don't know if you would like to provide any public comment or anything, but if you're just here as an observer. Um, <clears throat> feel free if you'd like to state your name sure. and add so, to the record. Um, I'm Peter Casasso. I'm the uh, uh, local uh, outreach coordinator when it comes to a program called Mass Rides. It's uh, it's part of uh, Mass DOT. Uh, it's a uh, it's a way of, of getting people used to the idea of commuting and uh, uh, taking themselves out of 
some single occupancy cars, uh, maybe commuting with other folks, uh, or or maybe looking at public transportation as, as an answer to some of the congestion issues. Um, we also, within uh, that same department, we also have a program called Safe Routes to School, um, which <coughs> will uh, periodically do things like walk assessments around elementary schools to make sure that it's safe for, for children to, to uh, walk from, from their houses to the school and, and, and making that a safe, uh, uh, a, a safe place for children. Uh, so that's uh, basically what I do is, is uh, I deal with both of those programs. I'm the uh, outreach coordinator for this area, specifically for mass rides. And I have another colleague who's dealing with the safe routes to school uh, portion. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, we, you know, as you know, we can't talk about things that aren't posted on the agenda, but I understand you're talking to our planning and sustainability director, and it's helpful to have that introduction overview from you, and if you have things to share with the commission, feel free to send them to me, and we'll make sure everyone gets them, because you, you're doing valuable work on an issue that we care about in the transition part of the commission. So. Yeah, I think we've had past conversations with Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and no other public comment, I take it. And so, if there's any new business today, um, then is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, good. Any opposed adjourning? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.